Shalom. It's two for one Sunday. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, I figured I'd do this whole, like, my one year of YouTubing full circle on the couch with Nilla. I made a video last year, December 18th, 2018, something like that. December 2018. And my two dogs joined me at that time. Ruby passed away in March. And now we're just here with Nilla. Nilla! Nilla, say hello! She's sleepy. And the title of this video is The Comment of the Week. I uh, get a lot of amazing comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to start addressing some of the comments that I solicited regarding questions, if you had any questions for me, and I will get to those. I, I will, I promise. But this morning I was, I, 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 ha I got the notification on my phone that there was a comment, so I read it. It was kind of long. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the whole comment, and then I'm, well, no, it's really long, so I'm just going to comment along as I read this person's comment. So thank you very much from Sis King Cole. I don't know if you're a man or a woman, so I'm just going to say he for brevity. If you're a woman, I do apologize. And first of all, it sounds from the context of this comment that this is an act of Jehovah's Witness. So to that, I would say thank you so much, Sis King Cole, for having the courage to watch videos like mine. And I have been where you are. I have talked like you talk. And just know that I care about you. And as someone who believes in Jesus, I, I value your freedom. With all of that being said, let me read this comment. He left this today. Uh, and it was in response to my video that I had made short, like, as we were driving out from my non-judicial judicial meeting where they told me that I had disassociated myself because I got baptized in Christ in Lake Michigan by a non-Jehovah's Witness believer. His comment, you need to know why dissenting cannot be tolerated in a theocratic arrangement. If a person becomes dissatisfied with the teachings of the organization, he has every right to leave. Pause. Do you? Do you have every right to leave? Can you vote with your feet? Let's just say you fade without, well, I'm going to continue. He says, if he keeps his disaffection, I think he meant dissatisfaction, um, to himself, no harm done. But if he tries to spread his dissatisfaction, he has become an apostate. If he tries to spread his dissatisfaction, he has become an apostate. I'm going to pause right there. Wouldn't that mean Jesus was an apostate? He openly expressed his dissatisfaction of how the Pharisees were t treating the flock. Was Nathan the prophet an apostate against King David by going up to King David and, and, and saying, look, you have committed a sin, you know, sleeping with Bathsheba and having her husband killed. Was he an apostate for calling out bad behavior or bad policies? Think about that, please. Marking and disfellowshipping is scriptural and is designed to protect the congregation. I'm actually not going to argue with that sentence. Marking and disfellowshipping is scriptural and is designed to protect the congregation. I agree with you. However, does the Bible teach in the context of marking and disfellowshipping total shunning? I encourage you to go on JW Facts or any of the other websites and, and numerous videos and really do your research about what do not say a greeting actually means. In what context are you to not say a greeting? Read the epistles of Paul. How does he end every single letter? He says his salutation is uh, 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. I just read that from the very last um, verse in Galatians. That was the greeting believers gave to each other. So if someone didn't want to be a part of that fellowship, you wouldn't give that sort of greeting. It doesn't mean you don't say hello. It doesn't mean you don't eat with your family. So please research that. Continuing, marking and disfellowshipping is scriptural and is designed to protect the congregation. That is how Jehovah dealt with the disruption Satan caused in heaven. He was not permitted to remain a part of the united heavenly family. What's wrong with that? All capitals. What's wrong with that? Well, first of all, rewind. That's how Jehovah dealt with the disruption Satan caused in heaven. Actually, Satan was allowed to go back and forth. I encourage you to read the book of Job, where Satan comes before the throne of God and the heavenly hosts and proposes this argument that the only reason Job is serving God is because he has a great life. And Satan was allowed to go back and forth and say, do this to Job, do this to Job, let me do this. And God, uh, if you want to take that, that account at face value, didn't shun Satan. God didn't even shun Satan when the fall happened in the Garden of Eden. Uh, he could have killed him right there because essentially that is what disfellowshipping and shunning is. It is like stoning a person. You are considered dead to your community and family. And even Jehovah God did not do that to Satan. By the way, I'm just going to say this really quick about the word Jehovah because I see lots of people saying, oh, it's a made up word, the letter J, the monk, the blah, blah, blah. I get that. I respect that. I personally uh, feel more comfortable using Yahweh. But in the context of con uh, conversing with Jehovah's Witnesses, I have no problem saying Jehovah. If you don't like the letter J, then don't say, then then technically you shouldn't be saying Jesus. You should say Yeshua. Uh, so that's a whole little aside, but I just wanted to say that real quick because I will be saying that the word Jehovah throughout this commentary. So yeah, Satan was not even shunned by God. Okay, you allowed yourself to be persuaded by stupid people who are not in a position to keep you alive forever. I allowed myself to be open to considering their words and weighing. I believe truth can withstand scrutiny. This person said, you allowed yourself to be persuaded by stupid people. Well, that's a that's some sort of logical fallacy, right? I don't know which one it is. Sounds like a logical fallacy. <laughs> um, and, and these stupid people are not in a position to keep me alive forever. So are you saying that the governing body is in the position to keep you alive? forever. Be careful. Then he continues, but that is according to your wishes. You do not qualify to talk about Jesus because his example is one of following orders. Really? Is Jesus' example one of following orders? Did Jesus follow the order of keeping the Sabbath? Isn't that why he was making the Pharisees mad all the time? Because he was healing people on the Sabbath? He was eating with drunkards and, well, no, not drunkards, but well, maybe, I don't know. He was eating with prostitutes and tax collectors, and he was not following the Jewish tradition of, of the day. He was shattering it. That's why the Pharisees got so angry. This person continues, he never objected to a single one of Jehovah's commandments, even if you think that they were oppressive. Like again, the Sabbath. Jesus broke the Sabbath all the time because he fulfilled the Sabbath. Then he quotes Hebrews 6.10, which out of this Bible says, For God is not unrighteous so as to forget your work and the love you showed, and this person emphasized these words, for the love you showed for his name by ministering and continue to minister to the holy ones. He left out that part, ministering to the holy ones. That's a whole other subject. Who are the holy who who are the holy ones? Who are the sons of God? Romans 8. So 
let's pause again because it's so important. You know, when we were Jehovah's Witnesses, we were just like thrown all of these like scissor cut scriptures and just like told to gulp it down where we never were allowed to like pause and say, let's consider the context. The whole point of Hebrews um, chapter six, if you go to verse one, and I'm still reading out of this Bible is therefore now that we have moved beyond the primary doctrine about the Christ let us press on to maturity. So this whole chapter is about pressing on to maturity. And yes, God doesn't forget the work you did, but it's not even so much about like using a name like Jehovah that makes you special. It's about um, about your faith and the fruitage of your faith. And I feel like I'm kind of getting off on a scenic track, but the NIV Bible doesn't even have the word name in that verse. It says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So I'm not really sure why he chose this scripture in, in all of this, but just to continue. Well, I, I guess he's going to explain now. He says, by referring to Jehovah as Almighty God, you acknowledge that you no longer qualify to bear his name and that you no longer have any love for his holy name. Well, I, I assure you, I have deep love for the divine name, what it means, his identity, his character, his purpose, his plan. It is glorious. And this person made a lot of assumptions about me which is okay, because I would have assumed the same thing about uh, someone who I was taught to consider a false Christian when I was a Jehovah's Witness. I would have made the same claim. So I, I, I do understand this person. He continues, by betraying your oath to Jehovah when you made your dedication, you can no longer expect his favor. So apparently this person feels that because I got baptized in Christ and was therefore, you know, judged as disassociating myself by, an, by four elders, um, that, that that equates betraying an oath to Jehovah. And this is the crux of the matter, I believe, for Jehovah's Witnesses, and I think it's the result of gradualism, is, is they really have substituted Jehovah for the organization. When they say Jehovah God, what they really mean, what Jehovah says really mean is the organization. Like that has become their God. And that was why I left because I viewed it as idolatry. He concludes with, unless you turn around and show repentance, you will never be happy again. Again, I just asked this person, like, what are you expecting or thinking that I need to repent of? Now, mind you, I am a sinner. I beg God for uh, forgiveness and I repent of, of my imperfect flesh daily. I'm more aware of the fact that I'm a sinner now post being a Jehovah's Witness uh, because I'm so focused. Do you hear my dog snoring? <laughs> Maybe she'll have a dream. She gets real animated. Uh, sorry. I'm even more aware of my, my sinful nature now because God's grace is like at the forefront of my daily walk with the Lord because I know I can't work for salvation. So it's because of grace that I am so thankful I'm not under law. This video concludes with his words, your videos will not and cannot harm Jehovah's organization. First of all, let me assure you, I have no desire to harm the organization. The Let's say I have no desire to harm the brotherhood. The people who make up the congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses, well, let me tell you, I actually still have dear, dear, dear friends, not here locally, but I have dear friends, hola, 
who are Jehovah's Witnesses. And, and I have Bible discussions, you know, specifically with this person because I'm trying to understand like why he stays, but that's his choice. So I have no, I have no desire to harm any Jehovah's Witnesses. In fact, it's my love for Jehovah's Witnesses that has impelled me to step outside of my comfort zone, my, my, uh, privacy and share my voice against policies created by the leadership, by your leadership that hurt your children, Jehovah's Witness children and, and, and Bible students, children. I'm talking about covering up child sex abuse and I'm also talking about the shunning policy. But again, like I started this video, I, I just really commend this person for watching, you know, XJW videos. Because that was the beginning of the end for me. And also the beginning of the end for me was reading this book, which honestly, I started with this book, believe it or not. This book without Watchtower literature. I just encourage you to beg for Holy Spirit to be your teacher instead of eight men in New York who write articles. Uh, and, and, and you know, they use this expression, Jehovah's Organization. That was an argument I would hear a lot. Well, God has always had an organization. And so here's a question. Where was God's organization in the year 1200? Like pick a date between... Uh, Pentecost and 1919. Any of those dates throughout those 19 centuries, who was God's organization then? Oh, they went, you know, dormant? Because it doesn't make sense. This whole Jehovah's organization. That, that ended with Jesus. So, um... He said that, uh, sorry, I, I just lost the picture. Again, I, I'm not interested in harming any of my former brothers and sisters, but I am interested in bringing awareness. So I just wanted to just, you know, in the last video I, I made, I was talking about like, what did I do in 2019? I, I did, um, Nilla. She, she wants to be done. <laughs> She's like, it's 17 minutes. Stop. Um, I used my voice. I was self-expressed and I shared my truth and articles like this. I'm just very humbled and thankful that, that this article was not only in my community here in Sheboygan, but throughout the state of Wisconsin, and I have had numerous people from the public, people I've never met who've seen me in public, come up to me and say, thank you so much for sharing your voice and spotlighting this issue of shunning. We just can't afford to have any more suicides and family breakups because life is precious Family is precious, friendships are precious, and to throw people away because they don't want to be part of your religion is, is shameful and not of God. So that is why I speak out, and I'm, I'm grateful that apparently Jehovah's Witnesses are watching these videos too. So that gives me impetus to continue to carry on. So with that, carry on and be self be self expressed <laughs> with respect and kindness. Shalom.